Greetings everyone, this is Enraged Eggplant and welcome to Dungeons and GURPS. In this video I will tell you how to build a fighter in GURPS. Fighter is a very simple class in D&D that doesn't really have much in terms of class features, even if you count those of the Pathfinder fighter. In D&D it's one of the most boring classes, but once you play a fighter in GURPS you will see that the difference is like night and day. It's mostly thanks to the robust combat system of GURPS. If you are a new GURPS player, it actually might be difficult to build a fighter, because it shines when you have a certain degree of system mastery. I also really suggest reading GURPS martial arts beforehand. It's actually an extremely entertaining book to just read for fun, not only for system knowledge and new options. Then, if it's the, your first time, I suggest checking out one of the templates, even if your game does not require them. This is because an occupational template can also serve as something of a reference list of traits and skills that might be useful for your character archetype. There's the 250 point knight template in GURPS Dungeon Fantasy 1 Adventurers, and 75 point archer and knight templates in GURPS Fantasy. I also wrote up a 150 point fighter template basing it on the DF Knight. My template has an expanded list of traits that are not appropriate for dungeon fantasy, but are appropriate for normal games, such as social advantages. And 150 points is usually the starting point value for my games. So let's take a look at it. Strength is an important attribute for a fighter, as it allows you to deal more damage take more damage, wear heavier armor, and wield heavier weapons. Dexterity is very important too, because all weapon skills, melee and ranged, are based on dexterity. You can make a fighter with lower strength and higher dexterity, but that will be closer to the swashbuckler template. Intelligence is less useful for a standard fighter but it wouldn't be important for a fighter who is making a career in the military, because many military skills are based on intelligence. But even outside of that, IQ can be useful, as such skills as tactics, soldier and armory are based on it. You can also make an IQ-based feint called ruse. Those are described in GURPS martial arts. Health is another important attribute, especially if you are making a fighter focused on melee combat. But do not go overboard with health, because you get diminished benefits once you hit uh, health 15. At HT 15 you basically die only when you reach minus 5 times your HP. But anyway, being stunned in combat is not nice, and a decent uh, HT value prevents that. And never ever take a penalty to HT, melee combat and health below 10 do not mix at all. In terms of the secondary characteristics, the most important one is basic speed, I suggest raising it to at least 6 to get the dodge value of 9. Other than that, everything is useful but not crucial. I think the only advantage that is essential to a fighter is combat reflexes. I see no reason not to take it. It improves your active defenses and makes you less prone to surprises. And all that for only 15 points. Other than that, I would suggest high pain threshold, as it eliminates shock penalties in combat. And luck. Luck is always useful. Ambidexterity is useful for dual wielders, obviously. Danger sense is a generally useful advantage as well. Fearlessness is not very necessary, as you already get a plus 5 bonus from combat reflexes. Hard to kill and hard to subdue might be cheap and good if you haven't invested in HT much. A level of enhanced block or enhanced parry is useful and realistic. More cinematic games might allow higher levels. Fit and very fit are decent and so is rapid healing. Recovery is an advantage people always forget about, and for a good reason, it sucks. A couple of levels of striking strength increases your damage output and allows you to wield heavier weapons. Remember, melee weapons are wielded with striking strength, not lifting strength, 
Lifting strength is for bows, crossbows and guns. I should also note that armor and weapons might get expensive, so you might want to grab the wealth advantage. Other sample templates also suggest signature gear, but I really dislike that advantage. And if you want to focus on one specific weapon, then the weapon bond perk is just for you. There's also a plethora of military talents that improve your non-combat skills. Born Sailor, Born Soldier, Born Tactician, Born War Leader and Seafarer. And positive reputation is always nice. Aside from simple advantages, you could create abilities based on them. For example, take a look at the Armor Mastery power-up from page 29 of GURPS Dungeon Fantasy XI power-ups. And I also made a couple of new ones in a blog post that I will link in the description. Note that those are still mundane abilities, despite one of them being based on telekinesis. It was just easier to represent the effect that way. Your choice of disadvantages really depends on who your character is. There are endless possibilities here. I'll just say that you would do better to avoid combat paralysis and berserk as both of those are quite crippling for a fighter. Skills are very important for any GURPS character, and fighters are no exception. Obviously, your primary skills will be mainly weapon skills. I suggest not to focus on just one skill, but invest into some secondary skills. You'll never know when you will have your weapon broken, get disarmed, or find a nice magic weapon in a treasure chest that does not use your primary skill. Two or three skills should be enough, unless you really want to be a jack of all trades. I also strongly suggest to put some points into at least one unarmed combat skill, be it brawling, wrestling or sumo wrestling. What else are you going to do if you get disarmed? And grappling is very good in GURPS in general. Fast draw is a, always a nice skill to have. If you are using a one-handed weapon, then you really should use a shield, so the shield skill is a must-have in such situations. However, there are some alternatives, such as dual wielding or using a free hand for grappling. And to put at least a couple of points in a ranged weapon skill. Bow, crossbow, guns or throwing or something similar. Fighting flying enemies will be difficult otherwise. Of course, if you are making a mounted fighter, then riding skill is required. Those are just combat skills, but fighters have quite a lot of choice when it comes to secondary non-combat skills. Armory can be used to repair armor and weapons. Connoisseur weapons is a flavorful skill. Expert skill Hoplology can be used to identify a combat style and let you avoid nasty surprises. First aid is a must-have skill for every adventurer. Forced entry will let you open doors. Observation makes you a valuable sentinel. Soldier is a generally useful skill for military service. Swimming, jumping and climbing are good skills to navigate dungeon environments. Law, criminal, is useful for fighters who serve as law enforcement. And if you have military rank, you might want to grab leadership, strategy and or tactics. You can take them even without rank, and uh, leadership and tactics are appropriate even for adventuring parties. And don't forget to buy some background skills that will define your character better. Area knowledge is something almost everyone should have. If you have a military or noble background, you might want to buy expert skill military science, Heraldry or savoir faire, military. Occultism is a nice skill because it lets you identify supernatural powers, so you will know what to expect from a wizard, for example. Stage combat, navigation, streetwise, intimidation, carousing, gesture, naturalist, fishing, teaching, weapons, combat, art or something like that are all good choices as well. If you'd like to have a more skill-based fun, consider buying some techniques. I know that techniques are generally considered as a par point investment, but I believe that they add so much flavor to the character and open up a lot of combat options. 
Consult GURPS martial arts for an extensive technique list. You could also add even more flavor by purchasing the skills and techniques as part of a martial style, just as described in GURPS martial arts. However, that book mostly describes real-world styles. I did create some styles based on the style feeds from D&D, so you can use those if you want, I'll link them in the description. Everything we have covered so far was mundane. You can really make your fighter stand out by giving him one or more supernatural abilities. Unlike in D&D, you do not have to multi-class to get them. You don't even have to, for example, invest in the actual spellcasting abilities. You can just create your own separate ability that the character has learned or developed, without the more general spellcasting abilities. There is a lot of fun stuff you can do with magic, psionics, imbuements, chi, or whatever other supernatural ability your setting has. For example, you can give your fighter some religious disadvantages, give him an ability to smite evil, and you'll have a paladin. Isn't that great? A fighter will also need weapons and armor. Armor in GURPS is heavy and expensive, so if you want to cover yourself in armor completely, be prepared to empty your character's wallet. Uh, there are some options that lets you save money. Cheap quality armor, partial coverage, directional armor, piecemeal armor with weights and costs pre-calculated for every material can be found in GURPS Low-Tech Instant Armor. But for more options, consult GURPS Low-Tech and GURPS Low-Tech Companion 2 Weapons and Warriors. If you wear a lot of armor, you'll probably be encumbered, so you should not rely on your dodge as a defense, rely on blocks and parries instead. Also, you should keep in mind that certain helmets restrict your arc of vision and impede hearing as well, but having a helmet is in general is always welcome. As for the weapons, you'll find almost everything possible in GURPS Low-Tech, with the exception of some cinematic and or exotic weapons. GURPS Low-Tech Companion 2 Weapons and Warriors also have a lot of rules on customizing weapons. Your weapon of choice is much more important in GURPS than it is in D&D. I'll quickly go over the various weapon skills and point out certain advantages and disadvantages of them. For a much more detailed overview of the melee weapons, consider listening to episode 9 of Only the Parts You Need. I will link it in the description. Axes and maces generally deal a lot of damage, but most of them are unbalanced, meaning that you cannot parry in the turn you attack. Thus, having a shield is required for survivability. Also, these weapons are very cheap and can be improvised. Broadswords are versatile, they can deal crushing, impaling or cutting damage, and they can be swung or thrust. The disadvantage here is their high price. Flails are very good, as they deal a lot of damage and are hard to defend against. However, they are unbalanced and usually have high strength requirement. They are cheap though. Knives are good backup weapons. You won't lose much by buying a knife and putting a point into the knife skill, but will gain a lot. Kusaris, just like flails, are difficult to defend against, and are even worse at parrying. Damage is nice, reach is nice, but they require two hands to use properly. They require you to use some additional rules for changing reach, snapping and entangling. I would say that they are very good weapons, but require a lot of experience to use properly. Pole arms are two-handed weapons. Most of them are unbalanced and some of them become unready after attacking, which is not good. However, they boast excellent reach, excellent damage and excellent versatility. Rapiers, sabers and small swords are fencing weapons that don't deal a lot of damage but are very good at parrying. However, they are also very expensive. Short sword is something you can buy if you don't have enough money or strength for a broadsword. Spears do not seem appealing at the first glance, but they are quite versatile. You can cut with a spearhead using the tip slash rolls, you can throw spears, you can stab with them, you can use them as staves. 
and uh, you can use them in one or two hands and they are cheap. Rich is good too, spears are nice. Staves are excellent. Sure, their damage type is crushing, but they are extremely good at parrying and are very cheap. Two-handed axes and maces often become unready after attacking and all of them are unbalanced. However, they dish out disgusting amounts of damage. Two-handed flails are the same as one-handed flails but require two hands, obviously. Two-handed swords have very good damage, decent reach and usually are balanced, however, they are very expensive. And whips are, well, whips. Don't expect to deal a lot of damage, but there are some cool tricks you can do with them. Aside from all that, remember that you can buy a weapon of cheap quality, if you do not have enough money, and that you can improve your weapon further by buying a balanced, fine or very fine weapons. Additionally, enchantments are always an option. And that's it for this video. Combat is where GURPS shines, and playing even a mundane fighter is a fun experience. I hope I covered everything here, and I'll see you in the next video.